she does everything. Ladies and gentlemen, the Honorable Rick Santorum. back in Illinois. Thank you so much. I want to thank, uh, first and foremost, thank all of you for, uh, for being here today and, and, and certainly thank all of you who, uh, who pitched in and helped and made uh, our time here in Illinois a, a really a wonderful experience. Uh, I think one of my most favorite events in the, uh, in the campaign was uh, right in the downtown area, down square in Dixon, Illinois, in front of the Reagan statue. We had a, a couple thousand people there and uh, it was a it was one of those moments that uh, I, I just um, remembered, uh, you know, what, uh, what, what this is, that we're part of history, uh, that this is a, um, an important time in our country's history. We looked at the statue of Dutch Reagan and, and what he was able to accomplish, and we look back and say, wow, he did great things and what a wonderful thing he did, but it is now our watch. It is now our time. And I think we all understand that while Ronald Reagan went through a difficult time and we had certainly big challenges then, we have even bigger challenges today. This is the most important election in our lifetime. Remember when I was campaigning all across the country, that's how I would start every speech. This is the most important election, maybe in the history of the country. And the fact that I'm no longer in the presidential race doesn't change that. This is still the most important election in the history of our country. And I can tell you, I feel a little bit better about that election since what happened on Tuesday up in Wisconsin. God bless them up there. But this is a tipping point. One of the things I found, and Karen and I and the family, as we traveled around the country, and we heard from you, we heard about the anxiety that people had, the concern that they had about not just the economy and the unemployment rate and radical Islam and our national security or the horrible deficit situation we under the size of and scale of, of the change. People were concerned about fundamentally what is going on in America, whether there's a realignment as a result of the policies of this administration. We know we've been sort of inexorably going more and more toward bigger government and more government control of our lives, but we've seen over the past several years the accelerator being pressed down, and all of a sudden, whether it's our culture, as we've seen from some of the changes in policies of President Obama, whether it's our culture, dealing with the institutions of marriage and life, the institutions that are the bedrock of our society, whether it's that or whether it's the role of government in, lo in our lives, the role of the federal government, the, but the role the, of the interaction between who is the master and who is the servant. And Ronald Reagan said, freedom is always one generation away from extinction. And of course, I believe that the potential place where that extinction could occur is an ever-increasing and powerful government. And I share that with George Washington. George Washington said, government is not reason. It is not eloquence. He said, it is force. And force, like fire, is a dangerous servant and a master to be feared. That's where we are in America today, where I believe we are at that tipping point, where we have forgotten who we are and we are becoming, as Foster talked about earlier, more and more dependent upon government to do almost everything for us. And we, by the way, as conservatives, are as guilty as any. Maybe not as guilty, but certainly guilty on some levels. Because we, too, expect government to come in and do things. I don't know how many businesses I talk about who Talk about the role of the Small Business Administration or the government that, that, that need help. We've been lured by that siren song to expect and anticipate government to be somehow part of everything that we do. And that is the fundamental nature that has changed in our country and it is going to get worse unless we say no. I traveled around this country and realized that the only way we were going to unite America and start anew is to remember who we are. 
Ronald Reagan, in his farewell address to the American people, said the greatest concern he has, he left office in 1989, was that Americans had forgotten who we are and what we were all about. So I spent a lot of the time tra traveling the country, yes, talking about all, in, all the substantive issues, but the core issue was who we are as Americans. And of course, to know who we are, we have to find out, well, where do we come from? A lot of folks, many in this room, have done a wonderful job with members of Tea Parties and other conservative organizations reviving the United States Constitution, which needs to be done, reminding us <laughs> the limits of government. But the Constitution is the operator's manual for the government of America. It's not who we are. It's a how of the government. But the government isn't America. America is something more than that. My grandfather was an immigrant to this country. He came here in the 1920s to leave fascist Italy because he wanted to be an American. I don't know, there may be people in this country who want to travel to France, maybe want to travel to China, who are from this country. But I don't know too many people who want to travel to France to be French or travel to China to be Chinese. Think about it. We are not an ethnicity. We're not a race. We're an ideal. We're a mission. America is a, is a mission. It's a what for. And that mission was established early in our founding with the Declaration of Independence. The Constitution without the Declaration is a dangerous document, as we found out in revolutionary France. France, the watchwords of the revolution were liberty, equality, and fraternity. The watchwords of our revolution were these. We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal and endowed by their Fear. with certain unalienable rights, among them life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Yes, equality. Yes, liberty but not fraternity, paternity. Our rights don't come from our brothers and sisters, as the French said. No, our rights come from a creator, come from the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, that makes all the difference because government can't give you rights. Courts can't give you rights. Your brothers and sisters can't give you rights. You have rights because you are a child of God and equal in his eyes. And that's what made America different from the very beginning. We are a country that was founded on the idea of limited government to protect those rights and the unlimited opportunity of free people. That is the greatness of America. It's made us the greatest country in the history of the world. We transformed the world. And that, ladies and gentlemen, more than anything else, is what's at stake in this election. That's why this election is an election that we must win. Because if we don't, and the policies of this administration in the past four years go into effect, the stifling, oppressive government regulation and dictating of every aspect of our lives that will only increase the debt that is burdening us and crushing our economy and our spirit, our withdrawal from our responsibilities to keep us safe and a stable world, all of which will come crashing down. So that's why I'm here today at CPAC. We had a great and wonderful year traveling this country talking about the big issues of the day, talking about issues that, well, in a lot of cases, people didn't want to talk about, talking about the important role that family plays in the economy, how important it is that if we don't have stable marriages and stable families, that you're not going to have a strong economy. <laughs> talking about the importance of the people out there who feel like they're paddling alone, those who feel like no one is really talking about them and their situation in life. 
We everybody talking about, well, you know, we have this knowledge-based economy and everybody's got to go to college and we need to focus on that and growth, whether it's Republicans and talking about cutting taxes and growing the economy, or Democrats talking about providing for people and making them more dependent. The folks in the middle, the 70% of Americans who don't go to college, feel like no one's talking to them. What about them and opportunities for them and the manufacturing, energy, and service and sectors of our economy? What about the training for them and the educational opportunities for them so they can succeed and provide for their families? They may not want to be the richest people in the world because they don't measure richness in money. They measure it in other things like coaching Little League and being there to teach Sunday school. And that that's a valuable deployment of their resources. Those are the people that make America tick and we've left them out of the discussion. But we brought them into the discussion. And it made all the difference for me in understanding how America really works. We want to continue to do that. That's why today, this morning, I announced a new organization that I've started called Patriot Voices, trying to speak for the people who don't have a voice, who aren't part of either narrative of either party, folks who understand what makes America tick, who aren't afraid to go out and tell the truth. Foster talked about that, and I think you're going to hear a lot about that in the coming days and months. This election is about whether we ha will have leaders in our country who have the courage to tell us the truth. It got a great shot in the arm from Governor Walker and his courage to stand up and face the problems that were there. He told the truth, he followed through, and people followed. And in spite of the attacks we saw, the people of Wisconsin, I believe the people of this country are looking for leaders who will be honest with them, will confront the issues. We, we did that in this campaign. One of the articles written about our campaign was Rick Santorum's Inconvenient Truths. <laughs> Talking about all the issues that, well, politicians don't talk about. Why? Because, well, you just don't talk about some of these things. You don't talk about the impact of, out of wedlock births. You don't talk about the impact of the breakdown of, of families and marriage. You don't talk about the lack of respect for human life and its impact on our society and our economy. We talked about all those things. We were laughed at by the elites. They're not laughing anymore. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a time in our country where we're not at war in the sense of a global war, where we all engage like we were in World War II to save our country. But we're engaged in an ideological war here in America. And we have a president who is leading that charge and is a committed advocate of transforming America at its very foundation. You, you here in America are blessed. We here in America are blessed to be here at a time when our country needs us. We're not asking to put on a uniform. We're asking to put on the cloak of citizenship and going out and making a difference. We're doing that with PatriotVoices.com. I'm going to do that as I travel around the country campaigning for people who share those values and are committed to make a difference. But you need to do it too. Whether it's in campaigns or whether it's standing up for the causes that you believe in, this is not a time to sit back. I know I'm preaching to the choir. You're here. You're at CPAC. But sometimes when you talk to the choir, the choir master has to encourage the choir to go out after practice and sing solos in their neighborhoods, in their communities. And that's what I'm asking you to do. Join together as conservatives. Have the courage to go out and sing those solos. At the end of that declaration, our founders wrote, we mutually pledge to each other our lives, our fortunes, and our sacred honor. No one is asking you to pledge your life or even your fortune. But ladies and gentlemen, your honor, your honor, because you are now stewards of a great inheritance, whether from your family, from your business, 
from your community, from your state, from your country. You are a steward of a great, the greatest inheritance of any people in the history of our world. And it is now your responsibility to step forward and hold up that honor. Make a difference for our country. Join us at Patriot Voices. Get involved over the next six months. Make a difference. So someday you won't have to sit, whether it's 10 or 20 years from now, and look at your grandchildren's eyes and explain to them what you did at a time when America was at the point of losing our freedom, losing the greatness of our country. You can say you did everything you could, and it made all the difference. Thank you very much, and God bless you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, Arthur.